Right, good morning, it's David Global Preppers Network, Urban Survival UK on YouTube. Today I want to talk about a question that I get asked a hell of a lot, is what is urban survival? Is it important? Do we need to know about urban survival? Okay, um, so I've been thinking and racking my brains about all my bits and pieces that I do, because my thing is actual urban survival. Okay, so I've got all my notes down here that I've written, because I'm not a professional yet. Um, I've got this lovely black and white filter that makes me look really miserable and anyone knows me will say that's exactly what I am. Okay, right, let's make a start. What is urban survival? Urban survival to me is being able to survive a catastrophic event, a shit hits the fan situation in uh, urban areas. This is power cuts, this is civil unrest, this is like extreme weather, whatever it is, but in urban areas. As most people know, urban areas have pros and cons. I mean, for instance, uh, look at the amount of supplies you can get in urban areas. You know, you can get med medical supplies, you can get food, you can get like uh, any tools you need, you can get water, you know, um, it's, it's limitless. But the problem is you've got a lot of people fighting for these supplies, okay? So it can be difficult to get hold of anything without conflict or harm. So, what does survive, urban survival entail? Well, in the prepper survival community, a lot of people are bushcraft, woodland orientated. Even the survivalists that we see on TV, and we all follow and we all follow the Ed Staffords, Bear Grylls, Ray Mears and stuff like that. Like, brilliant. Um, you know, uh, so we, we follow these people on TV. But, I mean, people say to me a lot, it's all good, well and good, surviving. It's inspiring, surviving on desert islands and, you know, with no food and nothing and, like, you know, in the jungles and stuff like that. But is this going to help you in an urban area? If the shit hits the fan in your urban area, is you or you being able to, like, survive on a desert island going to help you in an urban environment? Absolutely. I mean, um, to be honest, it's a survival mindset. If you have a survival mindset, it can help you in different scenarios. You can adapt this, you know. But obviously, practicing in urban areas will be good as well. I mean, it's like me. It's like I like to do coastal. I like to do woodland. I like to do urban. I mean, it's all part and parcel of the survival thing, you know. And in survival of any type, nothing is a sure thing, as we know. Okay, what have we got there? Okay, yeah, so in the UK, it seems like a lot of people are going to bug out in the woods. In the UK, it's kind of strange because uh, I have got some American subscribers and some from Portugal and stuff like that. So in the UK, it's strange. Our woods are really small. And even if 100 people had the same idea out of millions, it could become quite crowded. It's not like the USA or like other countries, so you can disappear in hundreds of acres of land. It just doesn't work for like that. I mean, for example, if you're going to go to the woods, a couple of things that you need to think about. The roads are chocker, they're locked down, you've got gridlock, you've got rioting and looting everywhere in the urban areas. Okay, the questions you need to think about, in my opinion, again, is how are you going to get there? Can you hike miles with a loaded pack? What are you going to do if uh, you get stopped by people and they want what you've got? Are you going to be able to look after yourself? Or how can you get from A to B undetected? Where's your food water coming from in the long term? So I think before you even consider bugging out to these areas, think about can you hike? Can you fight? Can you hunt, forage? Can you locate and purify water? Can you build shelters? Can you maintain the security of you and your family in a woodland environment? Can you survive without fire? A smoke will pretty much pinpoint your location to anyone if you need to hide. Okay? If you can get there and survive, I mean, especially in the UK, good luck, fair play to you. You're pretty bloody awesome. You know, it's... Um, I think in the UK, you would have to move around a lot to survive long term. I think it's too small that somebody wouldn't catch up with you. But again, this is all my opinion. Take a bit what you will... Right, so uh, the long term. Right, so unless there's an immediate danger to yourself and your family where you would unfortunately have to grab your bags and get on your toes and like go and do this as a last resort, you know, for fear of death if you don't, okay? 
Bugging in and urban survival are our first scenarios we need to think about. Unfortunately, most of us average Joes in the UK live in urban areas. Okay, they're all small, heavily populated, and as you know, desperate people are dangerous. And when you're in an area with a high population, you're in trouble. Okay, but that doesn't always mean you've got to get out of there. Okay, right, the chances for at least the first, they reckon 28, 30 days, don't they, of a shit hits the fan event, you'll be in your local area, you'll be bugging in and getting to know your local area. So make sure you know it, be comfortable in your surroundings. I say again and again, local knowledge. Obviously, with added mindset and a bit of common sense goes a long way. For instance, we talk about common sense. For instance, you've got people writing all over the streets and stuff, and you've got to cross there. You are not going to go through these people without putting yourself in danger, whether you're nothing to do with it or whatever. So this is common sense. You don't go there. Okay, some people don't own common sense, but, you know, let's have a look at some skills that can be useful for urban survival. Okay, because as I said in the start, is urban survival, it's as simple as urban survival, or is it? There's things that are really going to help you in urban environments. So, uh, obviously a lot of people know I teach urban combat, which is uh, hand-to-hand unarmed combat, which is quite full on. And also in that, I teach a couple of these things on here. So, the first on my list is situational awareness. You, You need to know what's going on around you. Okay, and this incorporates the second one, which is profiling, situational awareness and profiling. So you need to know what's going on in your local area, how to stay away from it and how to assess people, whether they're dodgy or not. It's as simple as that. Okay, urban foraging, Uh, as you've seen a couple of my videos, it's like uh, there's uh, lots of stuff about looking to your local area, see where there's apple trees, see where there's like a... you know, blackberry bushes, see, see the seasonal fruits and stuff that you can pick all through the year. Okay, scavenging. Scavenging is another good thing. It's like know where skips are, know where bits and pieces are left, you know, whether it's tools, whether it's fuel, whatever. Okay, so scavenging is a good thing. And uh, if you've ever been homeless, as I have when I was younger, scavenging is, is a good skill to have. All right, self-defense goes without saying, but again, you know, this is common sense. This all sort of ties into each other. With self-defense, you're okay going against one or maybe even two. But when you've got four or five lads wanting to take your stuff, you've got to get the fuck out of there. You can't like, you know, this isn't going to work. So you need distractions and you need to get out of there. But right, urbex, which is one of my favorite things. Urbex, for people that don't know, is uh, exploration of abandoned buildings, tunnel systems, bunkers, uh, all sorts of different things, caves. In urban areas, right, all across the country, I know this for a fact, right, look on subterranean Britain and sites like that, you will find all sorts of things. Bunkers, caves, tunnel systems, great hideouts, and not a lot of people like them either. So it's like if you can go down there and you know where they are and you need to lay low. I mean, for instance, if like uh, I've got one five minutes from me and it's on a previous YouTube video. Uh, so if my street become overrun or something or was... I thought it was going to become overrun. I could literally make my way, get 10 minutes from my house and go underground. And literally I could travel most of under the town underground. So great things to know. Urbex, abandoned buildings, again, uh, little pillboxes along the way. All these places where people don't like to sleep. Great things to know. Right, sourcing local water supplies. Okay, again, if there's no water in here, that you know all the taps are turned off, then you're gonna need water. So you need to know if you can't get here where you can get it. Local streams, little lakes, whatever. Okay, so again, something which we're gonna cover in the later part of this. Okay, right, learning to be stealthy and knowing when to shut the fuck up. Okay, it sounds harsh, but um, literally this is with family members as well. Because I've had this before where, like, you know, it's like we, we, if you take the kids out and you're trying to look at something and you want them to look and be quiet and they don't. So this is something that you've got to teach as a family. That there's a code word or something that you say to family and no one mentions anything. Nobody says a word. Nobody whispers. Nobody does anything. 
okay? So sometimes you're gonna to have to be stealthy and you're gonna to have to shut up and you're gonna to have to knuckle down and you're gonna to have to crawl somewhere. Like somewhere's not gonna be nice, but that's what that basically means is like learning when you've got to shut up and it's serious and your family learning the same. Right, growing food. Great thing to do. A lot of people know on the groups that I grow my own food. We grow our food in our garden. Okay, in pots, we have an allotment, but obviously if that allotment's obsolete, we still need to be able to grow food here or have the knowledge to grow food in other areas. Okay, so that's a good one. Emergency first aid, another thing on basic first aid trained, but I'm looking to do more trauma-based first aid, uh, but a great skill to have. Storing food and preserving food is another one, okay, which we all need to learn. Uh, we do a lot of it on the groups and stuff and share ideas and stuff like that. A really important one is the ability to, to defend your home and your supplies should it, should it be needed. Okay, you can have everything in the world, okay, but if somebody wants to come in and take it, if they outnumber you, the chances are they could probably do it. So you need to have a plan in place. If you're going to bug in, you need a plan in place. Okay, right, what's next on my list? Okay, uh, cooking, obviously, you need to be able to cook. As, again, I've got the uh, rocket stoves. I've got another stove that was built for me. I've got uh, ways to cook without the mainstream supplies. So that's something people need to look into. Okay, uh, remember, again, the problem we have with this is it attracts people. The smell of food, smoke, attracts people. So be careful. What else we got? Right, great man. This is basically going into the same thing as being stealthy and blending in and not drawing attention to yourself. I mean, if you've got to get to A to B, even if it's like, you know, a street away, you need to not draw attention to yourself, okay? Low profile. What else have we got on this list? It goes on. Log picking. Another great thing to learn. Local map reading. Get yourself some local maps, okay? of your local area, where you can mark out like safe areas and stuff like that. Learn basic pharmaceutical and natural medicine. Again, invaluable. It's like, uh, for instance, if you need antibiotics, okay, and you you manage to get hold of some antibiotics, you need to know sort of the correct antibiotics for the correct illnesses or the correct medication for the correct illness. There's no use giving an antibiotic for a urine infection if he's got sepsis. Do you know what I mean? So it's like you need to work out what's used for what uh, okay what else we got right this is a really good bit of advice uh map all points of interest so you get your local map and we want things like uh food storages uh like where food warehouses we want farms we want wild food um areas you know where you can wild forage water sources transport fuel medical supplies fishing lakes everything just mark everything down on a map okay because if you do eventually have to bug out then you can make your way past these areas for supplies on the way if they haven't been ransacked already okay again have a trusted team because there's always safety in numbers a lot of people on the prepper sites believe the lone wolf is gonna thrive and it's not so you know it's um the problem is the more people there are it's it causes problems. You can have arguments and differences of opinions and stuff, but the problem is, is like more hands make light work, okay? Because there's only so much you can do. If you're on your own, you can't sleep and guard. Do you know what I mean? You can't cook and forage at the same time. It's like you need other people, okay? Learn basic radio communications, okay? Um, I just basically learned walkie talkies and you know it's like learning the radiuses and stuff like that. I also did the uh, foundation ham course recently. Okay, so it's um, this is good things, the good knowledge to pick up. I mean, as you can see by that list, the list goes on and on. There's so many things, and this has not covered most of it. Okay, I need a drink of water now because I'm talking too much. I'm trying to get this in. There you go. Right. So, uh, where are we? So, so important. I repeat, know where food, supplies, water are. Mark them on the map. Uh, 
try it if you can find the places not in the main town. I mean, it's like you're not going to go to Tesco's in the main town, okay, because it's going to be heaving or ransacked or empty. You want to go to these little stores that are out in the sticks, okay, but you, again, you don't want to be going too far. You need to be able to come back to your bugging location. You need to go out, forage, come back, secure, okay? Um, and then basically when everything dies down, if it dies down, then you can sort of make the decision whether you stay or go. Okay? Right, well, where are we? Uh, I mean, granted, there's always variance in shit hits the fan situations. Nothing set in stone. And the ability for you to cope with change may save your life. Okay. So many possible hazards as well when it's bugging in or bugging out. We've got extreme weather. We've got... We got other people, obviously the biggest danger. We got illnesses, we got disease, we got loneliness, we got physical exertion. And don't forget the psychiatric effects of a shit hits the fan situation. I think this is another area that is really underlooked and underestimated. Okay? Seeing family members and friends struggle, be hurt, or even die will have basically you couldn't even imagine it. The tremendous effect on your mental stability. I mean, life isn't a zombie movie. I mean, a load of people have this zombie fascination. This is what has given Prepper such a bad name. But life isn't a zombie movie where you go and kill your zombies and then fucking walk off into the sunset like fucking Clint Eastwood. Do you know what I mean? Life isn't going to be like that. A shit hits the fan situation is not going to be like that. Okay, this is the real world. The ability for you to adapt and overcome will be your saviour. It will be... more useful than any equipment you have okay so again it's like you know family members dying and stuff like that it's 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 gonna fuck with your brain okay and it's gonna test you and it might even break you okay we don't know until that happens unless you've been in that situation which i'd say 90 percent of people haven't then we don't know Okay, right, on that happy note, if you're still here and I haven't bored you to death, that is just a few things to think about, okay? Um, The urban survival for me is obviously my main concern, okay? Uh, I do do woodland, like I said, and I do do coastland, but I live in a house, in a street, in a town, okay? My nearest woods is 15, 20 miles away. I could hike it in a day, no problem with a pack on. But uh, do I want to risk mine, my wife and my children's lives to go and do that? No, not until I'm 100% sure. Okay, right. While I'm on uh, the thing, I just want to thank everyone that's following me on the YouTube, the Instagram, the uh, Facebook groups are going amazing. I couldn't do this without you guys. It's brilliant. Thank you for all the people that show concern about my eye. Um, I'm sure I'm going to be fine. Okay, um, but thank you for your concern and your messages. It's been amazing. Thank you. Um, Right, so any questions or comments on this video? Remember, this is not a complete guide. This is a breakdown. I mean, I'm at 18 minutes or something at the moment, and I've been speaking quite fast to try and get through this because I expected it to take about half an hour more more. Okay, so any questions or comments? Leave your feedback underneath. Please like and subscribe. Uh, and please do drop a like on the video because it helps people sort of see see what we're doing. Okay, uh, and I've noticed with certain videos, these ones where I'm talking and having a chat with people seem to do much better than when I'm out being active, strangely. I'm not sure what's going on there. Okay, so share the videos if you feel them, but like a bit of interaction on them would be great. You know, drop me a comment, have a chat with me. That's what I'm here for. Okay, right. Uh, I just love your feedback. Please like and subscribe. It's been emotional. I'll see you soon for the next video. Take care.